Welcome back everyone. So far, we have had a look at our Cake Shop application and learned about the core concepts in Redux. Now, let's learn about an important function that the Redux library offers. Before we dive into that function, let us first try to understand the need for such a function. Let's go back to the real world scenario we have been discussing. We have a cake shop. We have cakes stored on the shelf. We have a shopkeeper and we have a customer. The customer informs the shopkeeper that he wants to buy a cake. The shopkeeper then takes one off the shelf and hands it over to the customer. Now it turns out that our business is doing really well and we want to expand a range of products. We now also want to sell ice creams in the shop. So we purchase a freezer and store all our ice creams in that freezer. When it comes to the shopkeeper, we could tell him to manage both cakes and ice creams. But to keep things simple, we are going to hire another shopkeeper. We now have two shopkeepers. One is solely responsible for cakes and one is solely responsible for ice cream. When a customer comes in with an intention to buy a cake, shopkeeper 1 handles the request. He is only worried about the cakes on the shelf and is not bothered about shopkeeper 2. When a customer comes in with an intention to buy an ice cream, shopkeeper 2 handles it. He is only worried about the ice creams in the freezer and is not worried about shopkeeper 1. What is important to keep in mind though is that the state of the shop is now the number of cakes on the shelf along with the number of ice creams in the freezer. The reason with this approach of having separate shopkeepers is scalability. In the future, if we were to sell cookies and burgers and sandwiches, one person managing all of that would be a bit difficult. When we split the job into separate shopkeepers though, it is much more easier to manage. If something goes wrong as well, it is also easier for me to catch hold of that particular shopkeeper and learn about what happened. Alright, now that we understand the scenario, in the next video, let's see how to implement this in our JavaScript application.